Hello everyone. I'm Evidence Ma'am. And I'm Stats Bro. This channel is for studying quick and comprehensive medical statistics. Let's have fun together and improve our statistical literacy. In this episode, we will explore What is standard deviation? And how is this value useful? Let's learn about these topics. First, let's start right away with the conclusion of this video. 1. Standard deviation is a measure of the spread of data. 2. In a normal distribution, about 95% of the data falls within two standard deviations. Let's look at these in order. First, let's discuss what standard deviation is. Standard deviation shows how much each data point deviates from the average. For example, let's consider the heights of a basketball team. Consider two junior high school basketball teams, Team A and Team B. Both have five players and a mean height of 170 centimeters. But, you know, having the same mean doesn't really mean they're made up the same way. Just conveying the mean doesn't always give a clear picture of the actual situation. This is where the concept of standard deviation and variance comes in, which we will study today. The underlying concept is simple. The more data points that are far from the mean, the greater the overall spread of the data. This idea is quite intuitive once explained. The calculation method is 1. Square the distance of each data point from the mean. 2. Sum these values. 3. Divide by the number of data points to find the variance. 4. Take the square root of this value to find the standard deviation. It might seem a bit tricky at first, but don't worry. We'll tackle these calculations together. Using the earlier data, let's calculate the standard deviation for Team B. Their heights vary considerably. The mean height is 170 centimeters. The deviation of each data point from this mean is called deviation. For instance, someone 190 centimeters tall has a deviation of plus 20, 180 centimeters is plus 10, 160 centimeters is minus 10, and 150 centimeters is minus 20. Someone exactly at the mean of 170 centimeters has a deviation of zero. Squaring these deviations and averaging them gives us the variance, and the square root of variance is the standard deviation. In our case, the variance turns out to be 200, and the standard deviation is roughly 14 centimeters. It's not too difficult, right? You might wonder, why square the deviations? Without squaring, positive and negative deviations would cancel each other out, making it a poor measure of spread. Squaring the deviations solves this issue. In the example of Team A, if every player is exactly 170 centimeters tall, the deviation from the mean is zero for all, leading to a variance of zero. So, the team's height variance and standard deviation would be zero. In the end, the standard deviation and variance directly show how much the data is spread out. The standard deviation value can vary a lot for datasets with similar means but different distributions. Let me summarize the content so far in three points. 1. Variance and standard deviation are measures of the spread of data. 2. The mean of squared distances from the mean is variance, and its square root is standard deviation. 3. Large variance and standard deviation indicate widespread in data, and vice versa. Now we've grasped the concept of variance and standard deviation. So, let's explore why does standard deviation matter? There are two key points here. 1. Standard deviation keeps the same units as the original data, which makes it easier to understand compared to variance. 2. In a normal distribution, about 95% of the data lies within two standard deviations. Firstly, why do we take the square root of variance? Simply put, it's because it's more convenient. Variance is the mean of squared deviations from the mean. Returning to Team B's example, their mean height is 170 centimeters, and the variance is 200, but this is in square centimeters. If we take the square root of the variance, we get a standard deviation of 14 centimeters, which brings the units in line with the original data. 
When summarizing this basketball team data, it's easier to grasp if we say, the mean height is 170 cm with a standard deviation of 14 cm, rather than bringing up the variance in square centimeters. This is one advantage of using standard deviation. Another benefit of standard deviation is its compatibility with normally distributed data. Normal distribution is symmetrical and bell-shaped, common in data like heights or test scores. In such distributions, about 68% of data lies within plus or minus one standard deviation, SD. About 95% within plus or minus two SDs. However, this rule only applies to normally distributed data. In skewed distributions, the 95% rule doesn't hold. In such cases, the median is preferred over the mean as a representative value, and the interquartile range, IQR, is used instead of standard deviation. More on this will be covered in the next video. In medical papers, like randomized controlled trials, Table 1 typically lists participant background information. This includes age, gender, medical history, etc., for control and intervention groups. These tables summarize vast data using means and standard deviations. However, just by looking at the numbers alone, we can't figure out whether these values follow a normal distribution. If the distribution is highly skewed, the mean may not be an appropriate representative, and the 95% rule for standard deviation doesn't apply. It's crucial to note that most medical data does not follow a normal distribution. So median and IQR are often preferred for their broader applicability. We'll discuss this further in the next video. Key takeaways. Standard deviation is a measure of data spread. In a normal distribution, about 95% of data falls within two standard deviations. Remembering these two points is a good start. That's all for today. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe and hit the like button. Your support motivates us. We'll continue breaking down medical statistics in a simple and accessible way, so stay tuned for more. Until next time.